Hello everyone. Good to see all the young and excited, excited faces today here. Uh, so we'll be talking today about cyber security and ethical hacking. Uh, two hefty words which we come across in our day-to-day -day lives. We hear about multi-million dollar budgets uh, which organizations have for their cyber security and yet they getting hacked, they being get hacked with a, by a 17 year old person. These all terms, they seem to be somewhat connected to cyber security and ethical hacking. But what exactly are these? But what exactly are these two terms? We'll be demystifying them today. Okay, so before we move ahead, everything beyond this point is strictly for educational purposes only. So don't go uh, get to your homes and start hacking organizations. Okay, uh, saying that okay, this guy said that hacking is legal. Hacking is legal, but only under certain conditions. Anyway, so. Does the thought of breaking rules excite you? Well, if that's true, then that is what hackers do. They break rules. Now imagine a situation where uh, you're purchasing an item online and uh, the total cost comes to say 1000 rupees. Imagine a situation where you're able to purchase that item for less than 1000, let's say for 100 rupees. And I'm not talking about coupon codes here. But by manipulating some functionality and uh, being able to purchase that item for 100 rupees, isn't that interesting? So hackers are looking for these kind of things uh, when they're actually hacking into organizations. Anyway, moving ahead, uh, uh, before we get to cybersecurity, I would like to talk a bit about uh, my journey as an ethical hacker and how I got into cybersecurity. I completed my engineering uh, in 2018 and got a job at an MNC. I was working there as a developer. Uh, okay, by the way, back in my school days, I had literally no interest in computer science. Uh, I was one of those kids who was always hoping that uh, the lab gets cancelled or uh, the teacher doesn't come or whatever. So, I was not at all interested in computer science, but here I am today giving a talk on cyber security. So, uh, life, life is funny, okay. Uh, yeah, so I was doing my job uh, at an MNC and I worked there for around three years and it was during that time that uh, I had this feeling that okay, maybe this is, isn't for me, I wanted to do something else. So I started exploring what were the other opportunities that lied in information technology. At that time I came across cyber security and ethical hacking and uh, it was during that time that uh, I even watched some hacking related series. Okay, and uh, actually it was that which really aroused my interest in it. Uh, and uh, yeah, so even I went to the mountains and uh, to get my head cleared as to what I wanted to do with my life. And uh, yeah, uh, that seems to be the modern day technique, you know, you go to the mountains, you clear your head out, you figure out your life, you come back. I came back deciding that I wanted to be a hacker. So. I struggled around for one year, I found some online courses, what, what are the uh, mindsets that hackers have, how do they hack into applications, how do they hack into organizations. It took a bit of time, it took around one year for me I was, uh, to figure that out and eventually I was able to find a two-factor authentication bypass. I'm sure you, you all have heard, what uh, you, all are, you all are aware what two-factor authentication is. I was able to bypass it for a cryptocurrency exchange. Okay, so that becomes even more critical. <laughs> now, the funny part is, I am working at a cryptocurrency exchange today. <laughs> <laughs> These guys, they were so impressed with my findings that they actually invited me uh, to work with them. That's a great way to join an organization, by the way. <laughs> you don't need to go through rounds and rounds of interviews. Anyway. Finally, uh, and yeah, even after that, I was able to find uh, security issues on Facebook, Cisco, and a lot of other uh, big tech giants. So that's a bit short story about how I got into hacking and uh, how I have been doing since. Coming to our main topic, what cyber security is. So our modern day world today is uh, our lives are basically invaded with technology. It, it is there in every aspect of our life. Uh, we have mobile phones, uh, we have a lot of access to the internet and we could do a lot of things uh, just at the tips of our fingers. With that being said, uh, as, uh, so basically we have a lot of power in our hands today. And a wise man once said, with great power comes great responsibility. Yeah, 
I repeat it again. So, a wise man once said, with great power comes great responsibility. As customers of technology, uh, it is our duty to be responsible and protect ourselves from the digital threats that exist in this digital world. Digital threats uh, could be uh, impacting human beings as well as they could be impacting organizations directly. Uh, I'll talk a bit about what are some of the uh, digital threats that uh, directly impact humans. Social engineering. What is social engineering? So, social engineering, uh, social engineering is simply you yourself giving away your personal information to somebody else, uh, somebody else online who is pretending to be somebody else. I'm sure you all would have received calls uh, from uh, banks stating that your accounts are frozen or your credit card is uh, declined and they would be asking for your OTPs or your CVC numbers. Never fall for such traps. These are just scammers guys. Banks do not reach, reach out to you asking for your OTPs or your CVC numbers. So these are some of the uh, social engineering threats uh, which we should be aware of. In the corporate environment, there are some cyber hygiene policies uh, which are used to protect the organizations as well as the employees. Uh, I'll talk a bit about what are some of the uh, those. So, you're supposed to keep strong passwords. Uh, use a combination of uh, numbers, capital letters, special characters. Never share your passwords with anybody else. And if possible, keep updating your passwords every 90 days. Because that's how long it takes to break an 8 letter password. With that being said, uh, some of the other cyber hygiene policies. So, whenever you're working on a document, ensure that you dispose it off safely. Because trust me, when I say this, hackers would even reach your dustbins if they want to get some information from you. Okay, so moving ahead. Uh, cyber threats which actually impact organizations. Uh, Ames Delhi, one of India's prime medical institutions, suffered a devastating cyber attack back in November 2022. Everything had to be taken offline. Their servers were impacted and uh, all of the procedures, including taking the samples of the patients, uh, everything had to be taken offline. At the end of the day, it impacted the patients. Similarly, the Uber hack in uh, September 2022, one of their employees' credentials were compromised. It eventually led to the leakage of around 70,000 employee uh, personal information on the dark web. Now, uh, that's uh, that's a big number and uh, what the point that I'm trying to make here is that cyber attacks eventually do impact human beings. We cannot live in a world where we could just uh, live in a delusion that cyber attacks do not impact us. They do. So then what cyber security is? We've talked about uh, technology invading our lives. We've talked about uh, what are some of the threats. Then what exactly is cyber security? So cyber security is a state, the state of well-being of uh, digital as well as uh, digital assets as well as uh, uh, cyber assets and uh, uh, from external as well as internal threats which might impact the productivity of the systems ultimately impacting the human beings a bit of, a bit of a complex definition let's break down that uh, a bit the state of well-being or protection of cyber or digital assets these digital assets they could be databases they could be servers they could be networks from internal as well as external threats. So, as you saw in the case of uh, the Uber hack, it was uh, an employee who cre whose credentials got leaked and at the end of the day, it uh, led to the leakage of uh, other employees' information. So, threats could be internal as well as they could be external. Uh, that could impact the productivity of the systems. So, as we saw in the case of the AIMS attack, it impacted the productivity of their servers and at the end of the day, it was the humans that were impacted uh, due to a cyber attack. Now coming to what ethical hacking is. Cyber security itself is a very big domain, uh, but we'll be talking a bit about what ethical hacking is today. So eth ethical hacking is an authorized way of finding vulnerabilities in organizations, in their systems, applications, networks. Hackers are hired by organizations to secure them. Uh, what hackers do is they look for vulnerabilities in these uh, systems and they try to exploit them. Now what is a vulnerability? So a vulnerability simply means the existence of a flaw or a weakness that could be exploited further. Vulnerabilities are of different types. It could be uh, a DDoS attack, it could be 
an access control issue and what not. So whenever hackers are hacking, they are actually looking for these vulnerabilities. Moving ahead, what are the, on a broader level there are three types of hackers, the white hats, the black hats and the grey hats. The white hats are the good guys. These guys are protecting our society from cyber and digital threats. Uh, the black hats, these are the bad guys. They are always uh, looking to cause some sort of nuisance. Whenever you are hearing about a big organization getting hacked, it's probably the ba black hats. The good good ones would uh, if they fi the good ones if they find some issues, they report it and get it fixed. But the black hats, they plan to misuse it further. And the grey hats, they lie somewhere in between the white hats and the uh, black hats. Their motivations mostly depend on what are the uh, what incentives do they have. So these are the three, uh, on a broader level, these are the three types of hackers that are there. Now, a lot of you might be thinking, how we can become hackers? Well, I'll, I've jotted down uh, some of the points here, uh, but again, uh, there's no ideal way as to how you could become a hacker, but uh, let's talk about it. So, you'll have to learn a bit about uh, the basics of cyber security, a bit about how technology itself works. Coming from an application security uh, point of view, you'll have to learn how applications work. Uh, have you ever imagined when you order food on an online uh, on an app, what exactly happens behind the scenes? Have you ever wondered that? Well, if not, then that's a great place to start. You will have to learn some coding. Coding is essential if you're working in a tech environment. Okay. The never give up attitude. You'll have to. Uh, whenever we are, as hackers, whenever we are looking for bugs on applications, we are actually, uh, most of the time, I would say 9 out of 10 times, we are faced with failures. Because it's not that easy to become a hacker. If it was, everybody would, everybody would become a hacker. And lastly, a super cool hoodie and some coffee. I mean, come on, what's a hacker without his hoodie, right? And you'll need some coffee as well for those late night hacking marathons. Uh, I'll talk a bit about some of the career opportunities that are in this field as well. So, on a broader level, I have just used security analyst, uh, which is a very broad term here. Uh, it involves a lot of roles which uh, people play. It could be about finding, uh, doing risk analysis. It could be about doing some vulnerability research. It could be about uh, uh, red teaming, blue teaming, and uh, a lot of other things. Penetration testers as shortly called as pen testers, as the name suggests. So penetration testers, they try to penetrate into organizations. They try to uh, get as much information possible uh, from uh, these penetration testing attempts. They are basically a special breed of ethical hackers only, but their engagements are somewhat limited and in a scope, in a well-defined scope. Ethical hackers, we've already talked about what eth ethical hackers are. And lastly, bug bounty hunters. So this is again a new breed of hackers which is coming up and uh, what these guys do is they look for bugs in their free time or out of curiosity or just if they want to, uh, just for the sake of it maybe. So uh, these are some of the career opportunities which lie in cyber security and I can tell you that uh, this field faces a major, a major lack of uh, well trained professionals. So yeah, there are plenty of opportunities in cyber security. I'll be busting some hacking related myths also. So uh, at the start I said that hacking is legal and here again I'm just uh, trying to bust that myth. So yes, uh, hacking, is, uh, hacking is legal, well that is not a completely true statement. Uh, well that is not a completely true statement and uh, hacking can be done legally if you have authorized permissions. Uh, to hack into organizations. Now, how do we get authorized permissions to hack into organizations? For that, we have bug bounty platforms where organizations, uh, they put up their programs and they ask hackers to come and hack them. And if the hackers are able to find some vulnerabilities, they get handsomely rewarded for it. So, hacking can be done legally, but in an authorized way only. Second myth, big organizations are well secured. From the outside, it looks like tech giants like Facebook, Google, they are all well secured. If they have billions and millions of dollars of budgets, how can you just simply hack them? But 
Well, that's not true. If you are creative enough and if you have the right motivations, you can just hack into any big company. I'll give you an example. I found a bug in one of Facebook's acquisition. It took me only five minutes to find that bug. Now, if I would have thought that, okay, come on, Facebook is a very big company and I don't think they, they would have a security flaw that easy, I would have probably never found it. But I actually did. So you'll have to take that chance of hacking into big organizations as well. And this are, they're only well secured on the surface, but not really. Expert coder. Uh, there's this myth around hacking that you'll have to be an expert coder if you want to be a hacker. Well, coding certainly does help, but it's not actually that you'll have to become an expert coder in order to, be, in order to become a great hacker. Hacking is somewhat different from coding and it requires more of a uh, logical uh, approach to how things work and how, they, and, and how you can break them then. So I've tried to bust some of the hacking related myths here. Uh, lastly, I would just like to conclude by saying that a lot of people dream of joining big organizations or even some do of establishing them, so I'm not really uh, ruling out the entrepreneurs here. But there's only a special breed of people who actually dream of hacking these organizations. <laughs> With that being said, I'm not sure how many of you want to be a part of that special breed, but I'll leave it up to you guys. Thank you. Thank you.